welcome to this basics episode on McConnell's bloomers. No, not his underwear, but the first high-speed train. The bloomer locomotives were some of the most successful designs in the southern division of the London and North Western Railway in the middle of the 19th century. They were designed by James McConnell, who had moved to the LNWR from the impoverished Birmingham Gloucester Railway, where he had been employed as locomotive superintendent. On the Birmingham and Gloucester, he was attempting to keep the motley collection of mostly unwanted imported Norris locomotives in operation. These locomotives had been sold to the Birmingham Gloucester as a supposed answer to working its very, very steep licky incline. But it transpired this was nothing but flimflam, especially the exaggerated claims of their hill climbing ability on a boil of only 50 psi. When McConnell had the safety valves properly tested, he found they were running at 100 psi or more, which rather terrified him given the thinness of their boiler plates. He was also concerned about the extensive use of cast rather than wrought iron for components such as axles and slide bars. McConnell had been born in Ireland in 1815 and he had been trained and subsequently worked for Edward Berry of Liverpool before joining the Birmingham and Gloucester in 1841. He was also a prominent Freemason, being past provincial Grand Master. Upon the dismissal of Edward Berry from the London and North Western Railway in March 1847, McConnell took charge of the works at Wolverton and set out to make his own mark. His first locomotive was the ill-fated number 227, alias Max Mangle, of December 1847. Whereas Berry had favoured inside frames and inside cylinders, McConnell adopted outside plate frames instead of Berry's bar frames, and also outside cylinders, and these were 18 by 21 inches, quite big cylinders for that time. He also used coil rather than leaf springs, which gave a rather bumpy or bouncy ride. The use of outside frames and large outside cylinders meant that the locomotive was somewhat out of gauge and it damaged platforms and line side structures as it passed. Unsurprisingly, it was laid up in 1850. Greater things were to come, however. Early in 1851, the LNWR board realised they were soon going to be facing competition for trains from London to Birmingham from the Great Western and also from the Great Northern Railway for traffic from London into Yorkshire. As a result, McConnell was ordered to turn out 10 large new passenger locomotives as quickly as possible. An order was placed on the 20th of February 1851 with Sharp Brothers of Manchester. This new design would carry impressive 7 feet diameter driving wheels and large 100 psi boilers at a cost of £1,900 per engine and £400 per tender. The first locomotive was to be delivered in only 10 weeks on the 1st of May. The rapidity in the turn round of this order suggests that the design was largely derived from the existing LNWR 222 Express passenger locomotives designed by Berry. Indeed, these first bloomers, as they came to be known, were virtually identical to the Berry locomotives and the design work was probably that of Karl Friedrich Beyer, the chief draftsman at Sharp Roberts, rather than McConnell. However, the deadline of the 1st of May came and went. The LNWR board wrote to Sharp Brothers to find out what was the delay. McConnell had demanded several last-minute changes to the design including changing the number and size of the boiler tubes and alterations to the firebox, introducing a water-filled transverse mid-feather dividing the firebox into front and back, and a mechanism to drop the grate of his own devising. The first engine was finally delivered on the 30th of August 1851, and the last one on New Year's Eve 1851. These were enormous locomotives for their time, with large driving wheels and high-mounted boilers. Indeed, the London and North Western Railway's Southern Division still had 90-odd tiddly little Bury 040s in operation in the 1850s. It's no wonder that these big bloomers were needed. And this was a nickname probably derived from their large wheels and very high running plates which were reminiscent of the short skirts advocated by pioneer feminist Mrs. Amelia Bloomer, which showed a considerable amount of not only ladies' ankle, 
but ladies leg too, although modestly concealed by baggy pantaloons. Oh, those scandalous Victorians. Even before the last bloomer had been delivered, in October 1851, the LNWR Southern Division agreed to the purchase of a second batch of 10 locomotives, also from Sharp Brothers, and as of the first batch, their delivery was also delayed due to last minute changes to the design. This time the firebox was even more unusual in having a longitudinal mid feather which reached to about a foot from the top of the fire bars and this meant there had to be two fire doors side by side. Delays to the order was also because Sharp Brothers were in the throes of a major reorganisation becoming Sharp, Stewart and Company. Karl Friedrich Beyer, who had done so much for the firm, had been overlooked in becoming a partner in favour of the less qualified but richer new men. It's little wonder he left to establish his own company with Richard Peacock and Henry Robertson to establish Bayer Peacock and Company of Manchester. A second batch of seven foot bloomers were ordered in 1861, bringing the total up to 40 locomotives. Ten of them were built in-house by the LNWR at Wolverton, five by Sharp Stewart in Manchester and five by Kitsons of Leeds. Kitsons, of course, having built their first locomotive, the Lion, in 1838 for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. McConnell also built a series of what became known as the Small Bloomers for lighter traffic in 1854. They had driving wheels only 6 feet 6 inches in diameter, but in other respects were pretty much identical to the larger sisters. Seven of them were delivered by R and W Hawthorne of Newcastle, and four by the Vulcan foundry of Newton Le Willows. A second batch of 20 were built at Wolverton Works between 1857 and 1861. McConnell's three ill-fated extra-large bloomers are however best forgotten about as expensive failures, and McConnell resigned from the LNWR in February 1862. In total, 74 bloomers of both sizes were built and they gave good service for over 30 years, being rebuilt with new chimneys, smoke box doors, cabs and other mod cons such as injectors over the years. The last one, originally named Stork of March 1862, was scrapped in November 1888. One long-standing myth about the bloomers is that they were painted bright red. This is simply untrue. Whilst some of the bloomers built in 1861 were indeed painted red, this was more akin to a plum colour and this livery was very short-lived as they quickly reverted back to the light Brunswick green of the LNWR Southern Division. Although the last bloomer was scrapped in 1888, you can still see a McConnell locomotive today in Australia. Locomotive number one hauled the first passenger train in New South Wales in Australia. She was built by Robert Stevenson and Company of Newcastle in Britain in 1855 to a design by McConnell. A little closer to home, a static replica 7 foot bloomer was built in 1991 for display outside Milton Keynes Station and named Wolverton to commemorate the historic Wolverton works. Even more excitingly, a project to build a working full size replica of a large bloomer was begun in 1986 at the Tisley Locomotive Works. It reached a very advanced stage of construction, including the first all steel, all welded standard gauge locomotive boiler to be built in Britain, and it was built by Babcock Energy. An original set of bloomer tender frames were used for the tender, and a new tank was made by Mercy Fabrications of Dudley. Sadly, the project stalled in 1990 with the locomotive 90% complete, but in 2017, Tizzy Locomotive Works relaunched the project, hoping to complete the engine. It was displayed with its massive 7 foot driving wheels at the National Exhibition Centre in November 2019, a very nearly completed locomotive. A further £150,000 is estimated to complete number 670, and YouTube ad revenue from this video will be donated to the Bloomer project. Sadly, the current global pandemic has had an impact on progress, but it is hoped she will steam in the next few years. I hope you have enjoyed this video on McConnell's Bloomers, and if you have, please leave a comment below. If you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe. If you feel able and would like early access to my channel's content, 
You can also support Rail Story on Patreon for as little as the cost of a takeout cup of coffee once per month. And I look forward to seeing you all next time on Rail Story.